Hi there, I'm Carrie Ellis, author of 21st Century Superhuman, and today I have with me my good friend, Alexander Rossoul. How are you today, Alexander? I'm doing great. Hello, everybody. We have got some exciting stuff to talk about today, and I've actually been a little mouse in the corner helping you behind the scenes on some of the technical ends of this project, but you have been editing an amazing book called Betrayal of a Legend, and it is about the assassination of JFK, which just won an award of the top six books for 2020 in Russia. Is that correct, where it was originally published? Yes, it was originally published earlier this year in Russia and has uh, won um, a top award for the best novels of the year, number six, I believe it is, yes. Wow. That is, that's pretty amazing, actually, to end up in that position. And it is an incredibly well-written book. It's long, it's detailed, but it's kind of a cliffhanger. You know, you're sitting there on the edge of your seat the whole time. And one of the reasons we're doing this show this week is, A, because this book has just been launched. It's just live on Amazon um, today and the last couple of days, and we are in the 57th anniversary of Kennedy's assassination, which that happened um, 57 years ago on November 22nd. It's also Thanksgiving week for those who are in North America, um, but I wasn't really thinking about that this week, although it is an interesting week, but those, it, it's, a, it's a good time to remember, wow, this was when JFK was taken down, which is a good reminder to us kind of in the cycles of what comes around every year, because this was a huge, played a huge impact on our consciousness, on how our, our sense of safety, on our sense of what was going on politically behind the scenes, and so many stories have come out about this. But Alexander, this book is a novel. And yes. um, it was written as a novel. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yes, um, it, it was written, it, it's published as a novel, as fiction, for multiple reasons. Um, one is uh, obviously for security reasons, uh, because it does deal with um, the CIA and the KGB. And when you deal with these types of agencies and organizations, you must be very, very careful about what you say. So um, it is um, presented as a work of fiction, which much of it is, okay? Uh, it is uh, actually a mixture, um, but it is based on actual documents, actual real life events, actual people, the names of most of the characters are actually real. They really did live and exist. Um, there's uh, also another reason uh, that it was uh, published as, uh, as, as a novel is um, because in part uh, there's uh, background notes in the book and they are completely nonfiction. They're about the psychology of critical thinking and authenticity and um, forensic science. Uh, and there, here I can give you a quote. Uh, any attempt to write a novel based on a perfectly correct description of real actions with real participants will inevitably fail. The writer, not to mention the reader, will become hopelessly confused with dozens of characters and get lost in the complex spider's web of their intertwining relationships. And this is very true. You know, I've read novels in my life that have just I've been like, I had to go back and look back at other pages, like, wait a second, who is this person again? So, so what this, in order just to make it easier for people to uh, understand uh, the, the story itself, um, there's only uh, basically uh, four main characters. And so uh, it makes it more simple for everybody to understand what happened on November 22nd, 1963. And what happened subsequent to that, what happened afterwards, in order to cover up the truth of Kennedy's survival that day. Wow. Kennedy's survival that day. We'll come back to that in a minute. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. So what are the reasons, the key reasons that somebody would want to read this book? What makes it different from all of the thousands of other books on the JFK assassination? 
Well, there's always, you know, obviously the most, you know, the superficial and most basic reason is to find out more about how Kennedy survived that day or, or just simply the fact that he lived and, and why the decision was made to have him declared deceased. Okay, that, that is, uh, that's the primary thrust of this book on, on the surface level. However, for me personally, at least, there are so many other reasons to read this book because it, it's, a, it's like a crash course on discernment, on the, the creation and propagation and dissemination and reinforcement of what are, what are termed, as of that day, okay, conspiracy theories. The term conspiracy theory, I learned a, a, quite a while ago, was actually invented immediately after this event. Now, with this book, I just now find out in 2020 why it was invented and, and why it was so deeply ingrained, this term conspiracy theory, into the minds of the masses of the world, because this was a very, very powerful psychological operation mm. to develop a conspiracy theory to confuse and befuddle the masses about what happened that day. Because the, 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 to, to put it in a nutshell, the CIA was directed, it, the intention was to literally create a conspiracy theory and create stories and create versions of events with lies, with deception, with misdirection, with misinformation and disinformation in order to, to create the illusion that John F. Kennedy was killed that day okay, and, and that he did not survive. That was the goal of the CIA. That was the goal of the operation. And that goal continued to this day, to this day. So, so what this book, the, the most important part to me of this book is exactly how that was done. Because as you go through it, you can see how this reflects on how the same sort of thing was done after 9-11. And also in yes. 2020, how the same sort of thing has been done with this COVID-19, right. whatever you want to call it, okay? And, and other conspiracies of the last 57 years, okay? It's the exact same mechanisms. So what for the reader, so for the reader, why should I read this book? Hey, you know, um, so, so, so this is the second major reason is it, is it shows you, it, it dissects, the yes. it destroys the conspiracy theory, it just totally yes. just takes it apart. It rips it open and looks into the guts and says, look, this is how this was structured. This is why. And, and it, but it does it in the form of a story. So you can kind yes. of go, because what it's a, there's a military analyst, two of them actually, that go step by step and discover this for themselves. They discover the evidence and they're like, wait a second, this doesn't make sense. This, this, this uh, it conflicts with this. There's, it seems to be a lot of hypocrisy. Why didn't the government answer these, these, these accusations and allegations? Why did they remain silent? What the heck was going on here? And and it, it's kind of like a mystery novel too. <clears throat> so it's it's really that. And and then there's a third aspect, and that is the human aspect, the the interpersonal relationships. It it it's just I'm not going to go into it, but it just it's very very deep human psychology, and you can tell that the characters that it the 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 people that wrote this lived these things it's yes. not thing it's, they're, they're not things you can make up okay right. they're, they're, you just it's a, when, when you read it you're like the, the dialogues the conversation but the emotions and the deep thought and the pondering there's a lot of there's some there's a lot of philosophy in here there's a lot of uh, uh, adages and axioms and um, there's even some Shakespeare so you know it's 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 quite dense and also quite full it's like a cornucopia of discovery and exploration it's really entertaining and the story yes. itself is just i mean it's it's like it's 
it's like any other best-selling novel in that you can read it only as a novel and you will be thoroughly entertained it's a total page turner yes and there and you and you and there's so many twists and turns there are actually four speakers in the book there are four distinct characters that write their experiences and how they feel about what was going on and their process of discovery so uh, for personal growth reasons okay and also for healing those are involved as well so so you know those those of us are in the, in the global spiritual community we can see how this teaches this helps to teach people how to discern between illusion and reality and when they look at information whether it be from a news station or whether it be from a magazine or whether it be from a book or whether it be from posts online or whether it be even from channeled material okay you can you can see how to you can learn how to be more objective and to analyze the information uh based on a what the how should i say the um the master shamans of reality creation have been using on the human collective for centuries and centuries and centuries so it basically exposes the methodologies used to shape our reality and then we're and it, it, it kind of le opens the door to lead into what is reality what is the so it opens that thought up without actually going into it just kind of shows people hey this is how the governments of the world manage kind of uh program us yes. and and how they brainwash us into believing that something is true and real when actually it's completely fabricated and made up you know really interesting points alexander and um one of the i mean i think maybe a couple of years ago, I ran into, I started running into disclosure news that brought forward the idea that Kennedy had not died. And um, at, on that day of the assassination attempt, I'll call it at this point, but, um, or story. And, and, but I think a lot of people, maybe for many people, they haven't maybe run across that little bit of information yet. So it's kind of an eye opener to go, wow, he, maybe he didn't actually die that day. And then secondly, wasn't this, this is kind of material that was given to the KGB between 1963 and 1985 and material that they were handling, right? So this is yes. based on real documents. Yes, yes. And there's a, there's a really extensive bibliography. So people can go and research all this themselves. You know, they can dive into all the rabbit holes they like. Um, the other thing uh, that I'd like to uh, mention is that the book is very self-empowering because it, 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 it shows people things that you never get in a university course unless you're a graduate student, maybe in politics or geopolitics. The, the, so there's information here about how diplomats work, how they think, uh, how these agencies work and think that that basically very few people a very small percentage of people get access to so but so it's self-empowering is that if it, we're all on a, on a path of, of personal growth and expansion and self-empowerment and bringing our sovereignty back to ourselves so this this facilitates that process um you know instead of spending two hundred dollars on a tony robbins uh, weekend thing or a thousand dollars or something you can read this book and get get a lot of that kind of information out of it you know if you're you know, open and aware and, and looking for that uh, self-empowerment kind of information. Um, and uh, yes, it's, it's excellent in that area. And again, it's very entertaining as well. Nice. So um, do you feel that the book has relevance to what's going on right now? I was, that's exactly what I was just trying to remember right. to talk about. Yeah. I, it connects Good. directly of obviously it's the Kennedy family. Yeah. Robert Kennedy's um, removal is discussed, why he was removed, mm -hmm. okay? Also JFK uh, Jr. and also the Onassis children. Mm. Because remember Jackie wow. just 
a couple of years later when it married uh, Aristotle and Assis, who was considered uh, number one or among the top three wealthiest men on the planet. And this is discussed, their marriage is discussed, their, uh, her life on, or their life on Scorpios Island. Uh, I mean, and it goes into detail. It, it's very, I mean, there's a lot of information in here that comes from the other side of the world behind the iron curtain that nobody in the west has ever seen before as a matter of fact nobody over there has ever seen before so there's a lot of new disclosures of documents of files that they had in their archives wow. you know from from all these decades ago that are brought to and and in the story they're presented to the united states in intelligence agencies as a gift uh, after the fall of the Soviet Union. And, wow. and so this relates directly to what President Trump is currently talking about and about China, okay, about communism, okay, because that's exactly what Kennedy was talking about just before he was removed. He was talking about the CIA. He was talking about communism and socialism. He was talking about how it is a disease upon our planet and how it is, um, you can go on YouTube and find these speeches of his. And one week after he talked about removing the CIA and scattering it to the wind, and also, you know, we must take a, a stronger stand against communism in the world, he was gone, okay? So this directly relates to what's going on now. Also, it's mentioned the plan, the plan mm -hmm. to save the world. Wow. And, and so it, this is what, I mean, I don't, who, people might have heard that term recently over the last couple of years, that there is a plan to save the world. Well, guess what? This plan started in the early 1960s with John F. Kennedy. So, and by the way, John, Jack Kennedy was a Democrat. Okay, so this has nothing to do with political parties. This is completely above and beyond political party partisanship or our politics at all. This is about humanity. This is about the entire race of humanity, the entire collective. This goes far, far beyond any single government, any single political issue. This goes to the whole root of who has been running the planet and how have they been programming the matrix, the masses, we the masses within this matrix reality in order to obey and comply and not mm, revolt, I suppose you could say, and, and not see beyond this illusion that they have fabricated for us to live in. Mm. So there's a lot there. And yeah. again, you know, it's well worth the uh, 1777 or uh, 7777 on the, the ebook on Kindle. So yes. it's well worth the investment. It's, you know, I, I really, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I've run a lot of businesses of my own. I've written books. It's, it's well worth the investment in your own personal knowledge and growth and empowerment. Yes. Um, so it is available on Amazon on, in paperback and Kindle, and then it's just getting ready to go out into some of the other um, places that people could access it. Um, do you want to speak about the author just for a second? The author, Megan Jorgensen. Uh, yes. Um, the, the author is a, a woman, uh, a Russian woman, um, who uh, she discovered papers written by her father and um, decided that it would be good to make it a book, okay, to get this information out to the world. And so she began compiling uh, this information and uh, she eventually got help towards the end from a family member. And, uh, but before it could be completed, uh, she left this plane of existence. So the family member uh, finished putting all the information together, which was mostly written already anyway, and um, then had it published in 2020. So that's, that's the basic story of how this book came about. 
Very cool. And that's all I can really say about it. Very cool. And my little clock here, it's 1111. So we've got just a couple oh, more wow. minutes. <laughs> okay. 1124, 1111. Um, Perfect. So I, I really, really appreciate the material in this book, um, your alliance with it. I feel like it's something very powerful to be bringing to the public right now as we're in this great awakening, this shift of the ages as um, the title of my first 21st century superhuman book, but we are in this time of great change. It was predicted by the ancients. It is, we have light flowing into the planet that is re releasing the shadows. That which has been hidden can no longer be hidden. And um, I think this is, book is a real, uh, really helped for me unwind a lot of cognitive dissonance, you know, like, oh, mm -hmm. wow. Oh, wow. And, and what is cognitive dissonance? It's when we're not really sure exactly where we stand. I like to say it that way, you know, having a little mm. confusion about what's real, what's not real. And this really helped me kind of start realigning in my own mind um, what might be real and that kind of thing. Yes. And uh, I did want to um, uh, say that that again with the self empowerment issue it, it basically as 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 your husband mentioned after he read it, it 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 he felt like it was like he felt when he walked out of watching the first matrix movie for the first time yes. he he felt like oh my god there is so much in this world that i thought was real that was a fabricated illusion that we've been programmed to believe and uh you know it, it's it is that powerful i mean it's it you know i i i edited the book as i was reading it yeah and and <laughs> over a period thank god really i had a period of of over you know like a month and a half it, to read the book but but i needed that time because it was so much to process and um it's very very powerful and very very helpful to basically de-brainwash yourself, or uh, as, as Marek said, to scrub out the cognitive dissonance from your brain. You know, it's like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna deprogram you here. You know, we're gonna scrub this, all this crap out that you've been convinced is, is re this reality, which it is not. And um, there's a wonderful message, by the way, the, the, it ends with a wonderful message. And, uh, it, it, that there is truly a plan to all these rumors about Kennedy having a plan to to you know reinstitute freedom in in the world and uh, this is actually true and the plan is still being rolled out today and that's why yes it has relevance to today very very much so as a matter of fact with memo number 57 yes. that John F Kennedy that John F. Kennedy issued in, 19, in, the, in 1961 that he was never able to enact because there was so much opposition. Right. He had so many enemies that did not want the CIA to be disempowered. President Trump just last week enacted Memo 57 right before the 57th anniversary of his of Kennedy's removal. Yes. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. No, I mean, this is just absolutely amazing. The connections are just absolutely amazing. And everybody knows, I believe everybody knows, that Donald Trump was very, very good friends with John F. Kennedy Jr. Yes. I mean, they went to basketball games together. They hung right. out together. They went to each other's family celebrations. You know, We need to go. But um, yes. Alexander, thank you so much for being with me today. Exciting stuff, exciting material. And I just want to remind everybody, breathe, smile, and love. Change ourselves to change the world. And let's keep learning, growing, awakening, and becoming the amazing beings that we're here to be. We will see you soon. Much love to all. Ciao, Alexander. See you soon.